Batman Noel, written and illustrated by Lee Bermeo, read by a full cast, part two. I know, I know. Hang in there. I told you that there would be some parts that are hard to swallow. Take it how you want. Point is, whatever Scrooge saw gave him one more warning before disappearing. That night, he would have three other visitors. Ghosts, spirits, visions, whatever you want to call them. Point is, Scrooge didn't know who they were or what they would be. Only that apparently they would show him things that would change his life forever. That was in the evening of the two minutes before heading home. It's so cold, I can't even light this thing. Any new leads in the toxicology report of the latest victims? None that we haven't already explored in the past. See for yourself if you want. Got something else that might interest you. So, anonymous tip. A certain cat burglar is supposedly knocking out Spring's auction house tonight. <coughs> you know, Christmas Eve auction house. Big haul. Can't your men handle this? <coughs> I... I've got too much on my plate tonight without getting caught up in cat and mouse with her. <coughs> or have you forgotten? The homicidal maniac is still on the loose out there. She claims to have some information that might be useful. And you know she only talks to you. Figures worth checking out. Waste of, t- waste of time! <coughs> She's only interested in playing games. <coughs> You should really get that cough checked out. It sounds like it's deep. But hey, I'm no doctor. Scrooge thought about the visions he'd had earlier in the night. He couldn't get it out of his head. He must have been crazy, he thought. It had all been his imagination playing tricks on him, or, or something, right? I mean, when you're alone in the dark, the slightest noise or flicker of shadow across a wall can take strange shapes. Entire conversations with yourself, discussions you could swear that were in your head. An echo through the halls of an empty house. Yeah, his mind had just gotten away from him for a bit. The holidays. Nostalgia. Humbug. It would be a night like every other night, he thought to himself. Christmas Eve or not. Nonetheless, rest did not come easy that night for the mean old bugger. His mind drifted, thoughts of the past, unfinished business. The clock struck one, and just like that, his first visitor of the night appeared at his bedside. It was a beautiful girl. How the hell did she get past the alarm system, he thought. But a hot chick. She can get away with anything. I could hear you breathing up there. Getting old? Or is it just the frosty night air? Selena, I'm not in the mood. <coughs> but baby, I'm on this earth to put you in the mood. Come on, the only reason I get out of bed every day is you. I went shopping. Don't you want to see what I got? I'll show you mine if you show me yours. I will not play games with you tonight. You told Gordon you had information regarding the Joker. Where is he? Now that's more like it. Oh, honey, how else am I going to get you to come out and play? A girl these days has to bend the truth a bit to get what she wants, especially when her man spends all his time thinking about someone else. Waste of time. (laughs) I should have known Gordon was a fool. Wait, where are you going? I mean, don't you need to, like, arrest me or something? If someone dies tonight, I'm holding you responsible. I'll make sure you go away for a long time. (laughs) Listen to yourself. What happened to you? There was a time when nothing would have stopped you from catching me. Nothing! You would have pursued me to the end, no matter what was thrown at you. We used to play, remember? It used to be different. You used to be different. It was never for fun. (laughs) Sick people like you think this is some sort of- Sick people like me? How dare you? You think I'm like those other clowns who run around trying to best you? Trying to make a fool out of you? 
<laughs> I'm nothing like those ghouls. I'm so much more. Well, that's it. <laughs> wow, maybe you are getting old. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Selena, the only thing getting old is this game. There was something about this girl. Something familiar. She reminded him of the man he used to be. Sweeping him out into the night, she showed him people and places he'd pushed out of his mind long ago. It was like smelling cotton candy or something, and remembering what it was like to ride the ferris wheel at the country fair, you know, when you were a kid. Remembering your heart pounding for the first kiss. His early life seemed so full of vigor, full of accomplishment and triumph. He bit into life with a hunger. I need to be the best man that he could be. With it came the rush of emotions that he'd long since forgotten. These memories, these feelings. Had he really been this person? Had he approached life so differently back then? Had he been so different? You're naive, maybe. And if that's what the old geezer thought now. Life isn't really that colorful. Not so full of infinite possibilities, he told himself. For Scrooge, life was black and white, all business. There was success and failure. With that thought, the first visitor left the old geezer with his past. To think good and tell us what happened. The night was far from over, though. See, Scrooge was still expecting two more visitors. And the second was big, larger than life, literally. He dressed colorfully, too. Kind of ridiculous, Scrooge thought. It was the eyes that was the most troubling. Too deep and kind for a man with such an impressive physical presence. <coughs> Need a hand? It looks like you could use one. I'm... <coughs> I'm fine. Uh, past your bedtime, aren't you? <coughs> From the look of you, that makes two of us. It's too cold to be out in your condition. Nasty cough you got there. I heard you hacking all the way from Metropolis. Looks like pneumonia, or possibly something more serious. <laughs> I love the way you talk about it, I like you know what it means to have it. You Kryptonians get sick so often, right? Leave the medical advice to the professional. Isn't there someone to save somewhere in the world tonight? Yeah, you. Come on, don't be a pain about this. Just let me give you a lift to your car. His hands were large and looked powerful. Like he could crush Scrooge's frail body like a walnut shell. But there was something familiar. An odd warmth, both from outside and within the giant of a man. One condition. I've got a stop to make first. Once again, the old bugger flew out into the night with what could have been some sort of apparition and wondered if he was going crazy. See, this was all still too much like a dream to Scrooge. If it was a dream... Then why did the heat he felt emanating from the big colorful fellow seem so... real? Why are we here? Scrooge had never believed in ghosts, spirits, or anything of the like. He had never considered himself to be a superstitious guy. I'm just checking on some bait. Wanted to see if... <coughs> the fish are biting. Isn't it bad form for a hunter to use parents or children as bait? Justice comes at a price. This one is going to help me reel in the clown. He works for him. <laughs> and sooner or later, his employer is going to come to collect. Just a matter of time, and I'll have him. His feet were always planted firmly on the ground. Superstition was a weakness of other guys. A weakness that he could not afford. 
Scrooge's mind didn't want to believe any of this. He knew that emotions couldn't be trusted. Despite being a bit shaken up by the memory of his past, he didn't want to lose sight of the person he'd become. He'd fought hard to get where he was in life. If the father is involved, he could go to prison. Or worse. He could- We only decrease the surplus criminal population. What are you going to do about the boy? I'm going to scare him. Scare him so badly, he doesn't dare follow in his father's footsteps. The present Scrooge was not weak. But the big colorful fellow wasn't about to give up. I don't think that's the way to go here, Bruce. I think there might be a better way. Let's go. I need to show you something. He knew there was still a chance for old Scroogey to see something he might have stopped looking for long ago. Scrooge scoffed. This had better be something spectacular, he thought to himself with a sneer. Sometimes I realize that spending so much time above the world makes me forget that there are millions of people out there living their lives. Decent lives. I look down and see. You look down on people. Not in the same way you do. Look at your people. Take a second and look as hard at your lambs as you do your lions. Sometimes I think that helping people, saving people, can be just as easy as showing them your face. The face of someone exactly like them. <coughs> showing them your face is easy when a bullet can bounce off it. But the things the spirit showed him were so... real. Downright ordinary. These weren't strange visions from the past, but flashes from the present. Everyday life. There were even some... familiar faces. Hold up. Can't thank you and the missus enough for having me over tonight. I appreciate it. Can't have one of my boys freezing his butt off on duty Christmas Eve with that little cheer in his belly to keep him warm. Besides, it seems like a quiet night out there. Thank the Lord. So far, so good. Although we did get some Batman sightings. I still don't know what to make of that fruit. I mean, I know you trust him and all, but... It's not an easy relationship to keep, but there isn't exactly a handbook on how to handle certain elements of our city. Oh, make no mistake, he's not evil. No, I would say he walks a fine line. It's just that sometimes he steps on the side of the line where you or I might hesitate to tread. Play on this side enough, and you tend to lose sight of the line. His vision can be blurry sometimes, but I like to think that I'm the prescription he needs to see that clearly. But him going too far? I worry about that constantly. These people that Scrooge knew in his everyday life, his familiar faces, weren't as familiar behind closed doors. Take me to my car. I need to get back to the cave. He always considered himself a pillar of his community. An important man that people respected. It seemed that others didn't necessarily share his opinion. Some still had faith, though along with the time-honored smile of folks who have the amazing ability to look on the bright side of things. Scrooge, on the other hand, wondered how they always seemed to fill a glass that was constantly empty. How do they manage to keep the faith? The universal hope for change, and, and change for the better. It had been a long time since Scrooge had felt that kind of hope. He had pretty much resigned himself to the fact that life is a never-ending battle. The darkness of the world had forced him into the shadows, and the only way to combat the monsters was to become one himself. But the second spirit didn't seem to feel the same. He seemed to be a source of infinite hope, and he radiated that hope with every movement and every word. This attitude was so foreign to Scrooge, it made him suspicious. See, it's like this. Sometimes... When you work in the dirt, it gets tough after a while to clean yourself off. You get used to the filth. You even start to feel comfortable in it. <coughs> and then you wake up one day, and you wonder why everyone thinks that you're dirty. Yep, you definitely need to see a doctor. Too bad they don't make body armor for your insides. Just lots of rest and fluids. In fact, I'd consider calling Alfred to come pick you up. You really shouldn't be dry. <coughs> Car's got autopilot. 
Good night, Bruce. Feel better. And just like that, the big fellow was gone. Things went dark and quiet, and Scrooge wasn't sure if he was awake or sleeping. If he was still dreaming, maybe the old geezer would wake up to a bright new day. <laughs> then he remembered. The night wasn't quite over yet. There would be three visitors. Three. Ha, 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 ha,